Chapter 14, Developing a Musical Line Through Improvisation Here are some other factors that will determine what you decide to do. Depending upon the length and speed of the song and how much of it you will actually play, this could help determine what you will do with your improvisation. If you have the entire song to cover your improvisation, you will probably want to take your time to develop it. Here are some suggestions when allowed the opportunity to develop the improv. 1. Start small with a 3 to 5 note motive. 2. Each time through the song, slowly add more notes, more complex rhythms, wider melodic range, more intensity and energy. 3. The improv line should consist of rises and falls following your phrases and energy line. 4. Always make sure to use the correct improv style for the genre. This takes lots of listening to the various styles that are out there currently. I will include a list of current flute artists in several different styles from traditional jazz to Latin jazz to smooth jazz and of course good old rock. When you have a short but powerful improv part to produce. What if you have just a few seconds to perform your improv solo, just like it was in the older pop rock songs? You may have to develop an improv part that is only 20 to 30 seconds long versus recording improv over an entire song. I used to work as a staff musician in several recording studios in Georgia, where I played flutes, tenor sax, or electric bass. And uh, typically, I was always brought in after the basic tracks were laid, which were the keys, the guitars, the bass, drums, and lead vocals. And they were already laid down. Typically, I was hired to come up with a 15 to 30 second solo in the middle of the song, and maybe diddle around a little bit around the main voice track throughout the song. There was almost never any music written out for me. I had to figure out the key and what they wanted. Most producers had no idea what to tell me except that they wanted me to come on like gangbusters. Most of the time, I had to take over for what the lead singer had led up to at that point and where the horn solo would begin. They wanted me to maintain the energy the band and the singer had left for me. So, what is the translation to all this? Basically, if it was a powerfully driven rock song, I knew that I had to skip all the lead-up stuff that you typically would do if you had the entire song to work on to develop your musical line. I had to skip all the lead and stuff and just jump into the heavy stuff. Typically, that would mean very fast rhythmic movement near the third octave or more in order to cut through the wall of sound produced by the rhythm instruments. I would also add growling singing through the flute like Jethro Tull effects, a lot of overblown tremolos, and much more mixed into my improv. I used the blues scales most of the time because this was rock music. Most of the songs were in sharp keys like G, E, A, and B major because that is what most of the guitarists play in. I used to work very extensively in this one studio in Augusta, Georgia where they did a lot of contemporary Christian music. And many times I was hired to lay down flute tracks to the entire record. As usual, they would bring me in after the bassy tracks had been laid down. Now this time, my sound and style would be much more orchestral because they would usually be bringing in string section after me. When I would have an improv part, I usually made sure that it was void of any blues and usually did a lot of pentatonic or modal work for my improvisation. Even the rhythmic tempo would often be much slower in order to fit the style genre of music I was recording for. I worked on a much warmer, richer flute sound and usually kept my improv work in the lower two octaves. The tracks were not so thickly scored, which allowed my flute part to cut through more easily. I was usually mixed in with the string players, who were usually members from the Augusta or Atlanta Symphony. Pretty cool. So basically, the moral to the story is, so to speak, be prepared. Know the style, tempo you want to do with the improv. Know the intensity, the message you are wanting to convey. Know the high and low points. If you can do it well, 
Spoken words are not needed for the audience to know and feel what you are conveying. The bottom line, listen, listen, listen.